Today, we're going to look at the massive salvage operation for the MV Golden Ray. Chapter 1. The Basics the MV Golden Ray was built in South Korea by Hyundai Mipo Dockyard, one of the largest shipbuilding companies in the world. The vessel had its official launch in August of 2016. In May of 2017, the Golden Ray was delivered to its owner, Hyundai Glovis, a logistics company that's part of the Hyundai Kia Automotive Group. If you haven't guessed yet, the MV Golden Ray was a car carrier ship. The ship was massive. At a length of 656 feet, it had a capacity of 7,400 cars and could slice the waves at 19.5 knots or 22.4 miles an hour. Chapter 2. The Capsizing before we continue, I would like to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is no one, so please like and share this video. Since September 2019, the car carrier MV Golden Ray has been lying on her side in shallow water near the port of Brunswick in Georgia State. It was carrying 4,200 brand new Kia and Hyundai cars and another 100 cars from different manufacturers that were all headed for delivery in the Middle East. The ship capsized shortly after departing the port. All 23 crewmen were rescued while the ship started to list. In this video, you can see how crazy the rescue mission was. four crew members went missing, but were eventually found safe and sound by the U.S. Coast Guard. Much. That is amazing. The best day of my career because you guys did that. Thank you, Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Woo! It is believed the incident was related to loss of stability due to improper cargo stowage and incorrect water ballasting. Sounds like a really dangerous mix. Chapter 3 Environmental Concerns By November of 2019, a nonprofit organization that monitors pollution in Georgia's Altamaha River described a concoction of contaminants that was already found in the water, including gas and heavy bunker fuel that powered the ship not to mention the gasoline, diesel, and antifreeze from all the vehicles on board. The discharge could have been limited to a small area, but the oil and chemicals could have also washed into marshland and seeped into the sediment, so nobody knows the complete impact of this incident yet. Concern was also expressed about a new wave of contaminants from the capsized ship when it is cut up for salvage. Oil-coated grass and floating tar balls were observed around St. Simon's Sound and St. Simon's Island. Why would they, why would they name it that? Damn. Chapter 4. Cleanup. The Golden Ray had 24 fuel tanks, and all of them were almost full when it capsized. Cleanup operations focused on those tanks first and foremost. Only 20 days after the incident, two of the tanks were already pumped clean, and the rest were plugged up. Some 15,000 gallons were pumped out, from a total of 300,000 gallons on board. During that time, the ship caught on fire, because why wouldn't it? That coupled with salt water, corrosion, and salvage costs prompted the owners to declare the Golden Ray a total loss. 
At this point, it was decided that the best course of action would be to cut up the ship in place and scrap all of it. Insurance losses on the ship were estimated at $80 million, plus an additional $80 million for its cargo. By December of 2019, Coast Guard authorities confirmed that workers had managed to remove all of the vessel's fuel. Chapter 5 Salvage The plan was to cut up the ship in eight sections, each weighing between 2,700 and 4,100 tons. Those pieces would then be removed on barges and brought to land for proper disposal. By October, the VB-10,000, which is the largest lift vessel ever built in the United States, was positioned over the ship. The VB-10,000 is capable of lifting 6,800 tons, making it the perfect tool for the job. By the way, this machinery was built to clear debris from toppled oil drilling platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. I imagine it's a sad day in any boardroom when the words bring out the VB-10,000 are spoken. In November, the first cut, which was removing the vessel's bow, was completed. It was originally expected to take a mere 24 hours, but a tropical storm and a broken cutting chain made the process last 20 days. Oh yeah, the cutting chain. You might have wondered how they would cut up a massive ship with a cutting chain, of course. The easiest way to explain it is to think of a wire cheese cutter, but on a grander scale. The process hasn't been without issue though. At one point, the salvage company was accused of negligence when cars were filmed falling into the water. And in May, the ship caught fire again. By July 6, 2021, Section 3 was removed, leaving only two more cuts and a total of three more sections to be transported to shore. It will be another few months before the salvage operation is complete. I wanted to ask you, my precious viewer, do you like this type of content? Would you like to see more in-depth videos about single subjects? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.